Hi, Wendy. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I was touched by your presentation at the event the other day when I saw you. Yes. And your topic is ending period, period poverty. poverty. Uh -huh. So your presentation brought me back to those times when I was 14, when it all started. Right. <laughs> and of course, it's a very important topic in every girl's life. But I don't understand one thing. One, why it says that one out of four schoolgirls can you explain? Um, yeah, so the statistic is one in four girls is missing school every month for the length of their period. And so I think, you know, period poverty is, so period poverty is a lack of access to period supplies, education surrounding menstruation, and also proper hygiene facilities. So, so much goes into it. So I think when you're an adult and you can't afford period supplies is one thing, but when you're a, ch a child, you know, you start, girls are starting their periods younger and younger, 9, 10, 11. They may have money, their families may have money, but they don't have transportation, they're embarrassed. Um, so I think a lot of that goes into the statistic, especially of when we're talking about our students, of why they don't have period supplies. Okay, one out of four, is it Southern Nevada? That's a national statistic. Is there any like educational program that supports your topic in school currently, or is it more like sex education? Right, so I think um, it is the sex education, or they call it growth and development mm -hmm. class. Um, so they have it, I believe, in the Clark County School, School District, excuse me, in the fifth grade. So what we have done is we have partnered with Clark County School District to provide a smaller period kit mm -hmm. to those fifth grade girls, five pads, five liners, so that they can have something to take home from their growth and development class because a lot of times it's the first time they've even heard about periods. So how does a pad you know, even work? A lot of them have no frame of reference. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've in April we donated kits and then we're going to do it again in October. So there's 12, roughly 12,000 girls in the fifth grade in Clark County. F fifth grade is it's what, nine years old, 10 years old? Roughly nine years old, I believe, yes. Do they invite, invite parents to these classes or after classes? I do believe there's some sort of permission required to attend the class, but I do think it's during school hours, so I don't think the parents attend. How many parents explain to their girls what it is? Right, I mean, you know, it's a good question. I mean, I'd like to say that in the United States we're progressive and people talk about it, but I, I have just on the subject as a whole gotten a lot of pushback, still taboo. People say, oh, you're talking about periods, you know, that's private. Um, so I want to say that parents are talking to their kids about it, but I don't know that that's the case. I do think we have a lot of uh, multi-generational families living together. A lot of cultural diversity in Right, America. there's a lot of cultural diversity, right. So to that point, you know, we have in the school district, we can only give pads. Um, but, you know, just as we work on this cause in our neighborhoods, in our communities, there is a lot of, we only use pads, we don't use tampons for different cultural, religious mm -hmm. uh, taboos still, still today come into play with certain reasons why you can't use a tampon. So I definitely mm -hmm. think, to your point, there is a lot of different reasons why people aren't talking about it. So are you trying to include any educational uh, segment to your nonprofit? We haven't yet. We'd like to get there. Mm -hmm. um, we've been cautious on providing certain educational materials just because there's a lot of liability. People don't necessarily, I don't want someone coming back and you know saying, Project Maryland said to use our tampon for 16 hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we've just really, up to this point, we've just really been boots on the ground giving the period supplies. I think there's still room for us to be involved in advocacy, education, um, you know, different parts surrounding period poverty, but we've just been so busy with collecting products, collecting donations, and then distributing them to the community that we haven't quite gotten there yet. What's in the bag? So um, each bag is uh, intended to have enough supplies for an entire cycle. Obviously that's a moving target, everyone's period's different. Uh, but for me, it's very important that we're giving um, our clients not only a healthy period, but a dignified one as well. So I want you to have enough supplies, hopefully that will last your entire cycle. Uh, so we make, right now we make three different kinds of bags. The first one we started with is our tampon bag. So it has 15 tampons, five overnight pads, five panty liners, and five hygiene wipes. 
And then, as I said, you know, a lot of the clients we found out are not using tampons. And when they don't use a tampon, they emphatically do not use a tampon. So a lot of that was going to waste. So we developed a pad bag that has 20 different size pads, depending on what we have, mm -hmm. five panty liners and five hygiene wipes. And that's a good, pretty good size. I think so. I just formulated it off the FDA's average cycles, five days, change your product by the directions every six to eight hours. Um, that's how we came up with the contents. Like I said, I've had feedback where this is too much, this is not enough. Um, but my hope is that we're just helping across the board, at least get you through the majority of your period. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as far as I understand, you have two categories, homeless people and school children. Um, yes and no. So when I started Project Maryland, I was reading an article about period poverty in a magazine, and it was specifically outlining our home insecure communities. Mm -hmm. The lady you see on the street, and you will look at her and you think, does she have food? Does she have clothes? Is she cold? But no one ever thinks what happens when she gets her period. Mm -hmm. And it's a very basic bodily function that happens to over half the population. So when I formulated the bags, yes, it was for that person on the street. Um, and then you're right, we do focus a lot on schools and the students, but you know, there's a whole middle ground there of people like me and you that are down to our last $10 that month. And what are we gonna do with our last $10? We're gonna put gas in our car, we're gonna buy milk for our kids, and then we're gonna use something, socks, toilet paper, something for our period and we shouldn't have to do that. And I can't believe that it's you know, going on in America. Right, and that's the thing too. A lot of people think, oh, it doesn't happen in the United States, but it is, it's happening here. You know, you can't use any sort of EBT, SNAP, Medicaid, any sort of federal funds to purchase those products because they're still classified as luxury items. Mm -hmm. So we really need to wipe away that thought that toilet paper and paper towels and hand soap are a necessity, but period supplies are luxury mm, because wow. It's not, it's not a luxury to have a tampon. It's, it, it should be a, a human right. So I can understand the way I would school children or homeless people would get their supplies. But what about that segment of middle class people where they get your bag? Right. So we have our program. It's called Finding Marilyn. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Marilyn was my mom. We lost her to cancer in 2011. So we dedicate our mission of giving women dignity back to her. Um, so Finding Marilyn is our program where different businesses around town hold our bags and you can go in during their regular business hours and just ask for the bag Marilyn left for you. And then you can get a bag of our period supplies. What kind of businesses are these? So right now we have a handful of great um, community partners that support us, the Foundation for Recovery, Olive Crest. There's an Amazon facility out in North Las Vegas that has them for us. Um, but we recently just partnered with the Clark County Library District. Mm -hmm. So eventually not today but we are approved to have our bags in all 25 of their libraries so you can basically go to the so library you can basically go to the library we are currently we have bags right now in the rainbow library spring valley and mesquite those actively have our bags and we are rolling out the other branches as we can uh, we're also in two henderson libraries so that's amazing um, and so if you go on our website at projectmaryland.com go to the Finding Maryland tab. Mm -hmm. It's a map of where our bags are around town. And we'll update that as the libraries come online. Why you are the one who raised this topic and who continue working on it? Because I have a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, I was literally in the bath reading People magazine, and it was an article profiling an organization of Southern California called Happy Period. Mm -hmm. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks that I thought, I never thought about this. I never thought, yes, I'm always running to donate clothes or running to donate school supplies or, you know, blankets or whatever the case is. But what does someone do when they get their period? And it really is just a basic function. For example, we donate to Dress for Success. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, they put the bags in with the women with their new suits and, you know, their, their new, when they're getting a new life, right, ready for their career. But they're walking out the door to their interview and they have their beautiful suit and their resume, but they don't have a pad and they get their period. So what are their choices? They either don't go or they go with a wad of napkins in their underwear and they don't feel good about themselves. So they're not going to do great at their interview. They're not going to hold their head high. So, and what I love about it too is, you know, especially in today's climate, I guess it always happens, but everything's so pol so polarized, right? With mm -hmm. politics and people's feelings and judgments about things. But 
really somebody's period, that's coming. You know, <laughs> CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are getting their period, mm. and prostitutes are getting their period, and houseless people are getting their period. So whatever, people are judgmental, right? So whatever your judgment are, whatever your judgments are, whatever you perceive the reason this person can't afford supplies, they made bad choices, they're a drug addict, whatever you think, it really doesn't matter because mm. their periods are coming. And it doesn't matter what poor choices you think they've made. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat, your period's coming. Mm -hmm. So I just want to help with that. And that's why we only put period supplies in our bags. We only do period supplies. We don't do shampoo and, and candy and chapstick. It's only period supplies because all of these amazing organizations in Southern Nevada are already doing such a fantastic job at the food, at the shampoo, at the deodorant. We just want to give that one piece to kind of fill in that puzzle. For me as a stranger, I couldn't understand the education in America is so expensive. How come school district doesn't solve this problem? How come you from outside have to come and solve this problem? I don't know. You know, in 2021, they did pass a bill, the state of Nevada passed a bill that requires middle and high school and charter schools to offer free period supplies in the bathrooms. And they do, right? So it is it's, some of it's, them. Well, so in my, you know, in my education on this subject, it seems that they did provide two free machines to be installed in the bathrooms to each school. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily know that they're all being, it's all being fulfilled the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So the schools do have a pad if you need one in the moment. But if you think about that again, take you back to being 12, the minutia of that, right? Mm -hmm. You're in the bathroom and uh-oh, now I have to fix whatever I've got going on and make my way to the nurse, which causes me to be gone from class longer, mm -hmm. the embarrassment of what's going on. Then you get to the nurse and oh, she's not there. So then what do you do? And right? not, ever, not ever you'll even have a, a courage to approach the right, nurse. Right, right, so it's, so I don't know, I think, um, especially here in Clark County, I think we're the fifth largest school district in the country. Mm -hmm. So we have a wide range of challenges and I think that's just one of them. But you know, we do what I was saying earlier about our two kits, we have formulated a third kit for the Clark County School District. Nope, so they don't allow tampons or wipes mm -hmm. in the Clark County School District. So we've formulated a bag that's just pads and liners and we offer those to any school that needs them. So you're, you're supplying both public and private schools? Public and private and charter. And so charter. yeah, so my son my son goes to private school. I gave some bags to them, um, you know, and I've had some feedback on why does private school need free period supplies? Mm -hmm. And the answer is because those kids, again, could live in a very affluent home, but they have no one to talk to them about mm -hmm. it. They're embarrassed. They have no transportation. So sometimes it goes, especially for our students, it goes beyond monetary. There's so many challenges and we want our kids to stay in school. You know, what does that do to a student's education and their future if they have to miss one week every month? It, it can't be good. But I can't, I can't believe this statistic. It's so surprising for me. Well, I mean, it, I mean like I said, there's 12,000, roughly 12,000 girls in the fifth grade in Clark County. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the numbers are just huge of how many students we have, you know, nationwide that, yeah, one in, one in four, you know, one quarter of them are missing school. Do you have a chance to communicate with people that you provide these bags? Sometimes. So to your point, you know, we're not open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times my communication is with the other nonprofit that's handing them out. But sometimes we do get to hear. So one of one of the organizations we uh, donate to is Shine a Light. They go underground and provide resources to our friends who live in our tunnels underneath the city. Um, and so they've shared with me that a lot of times, you know, unfortunately the women are traded as commodities underground. They're not treated with a great level of respect. So when resources come down for help, the women have to hide. They don't let them come out. But now when they see our bag, like, oh, the tampons are here, you know, and they let the women come out. So that makes me feel good because possibly now these women are able to have access to other services mm -hmm. besides just our period supplies. And some of those women that I have met have shared with me that 
you know, just it's it's like I said, it's healthy and it's dignified, right? They just how do you not how do you how do we want our friends to do better when they can't even care for themselves on their period? Right. You know, we, we work with a couple organizations that work with sex workers and I'll have some volunteers say, well, we don't advocate for sex work. And I said, well, we don't advocate for sex work either. We advocate for that person not bleeding on their pants. Right. Mm -hmm. How, you know, people have so many judgments. It's just heartbreaking. But how can somebody do better when they can't hold their head high at their job interview? Yeah. And they just basic needs, basic comfort, basically. Right. It's just it's just a basic it's just a basic biological function, like I said, that's coming no matter what your whatever status. the word is, status in life is. Yeah. It's coming. And so we just want to help with that. On your website, I saw that everybody can be a sponsor, right? Right, right, right. So we are like we are a 501c3, so all donations are tax deductible that come into us. Um, we do have a few people who provide us with an annual monetary sponsorship. Um, NDL Group Construction, Anthem Medicaid, um, Wasson, a lot of those companies do give us a check every month, every year, I'm sorry, as mm -hmm. a sponsorship. But then, yeah, we have on our website, sponsor a period, you know, $10 a month, you can sign up for a monthly sponsorship and that one of our bags is roughly $10 to put together. Um, so, you know, if you want to sponsor someone's period, we gladly love you to be part of our period posse and and make your monthly donation. But yeah, we, we welcome everyone's support, products, volunteers, and um, monetary donations. So what's your, the best case study so far that you are proud of? I mean, I did our, so I ran our numbers for last year and we gave out over 1 million period supplies last year. So mm -hmm. that makes me proud. Um, you know, it's just, it makes me feel good that so many members of our community were bringing it to light, right? Mm -hmm. Like. What's period poverty? What does that mean? You give period supplies? I don't understand. You know, I'm like pad, pads and tampons, period supplies. And I say period supplies because feminine hygiene sometimes gets a little cloudy. What are you talking about? Um, and so again, while I want to keep it respectful and, and definitely be mindful of people's, um, what's the word, like, you know, their comfort level, mm -hmm. I also want to have fun with it, right? Like I said, our volunteers are called our period posse. You know, we have a little maxi taxi that we drive around town. <laughs> it's cool. I've, you know, I saw yeah, it. <laughs> try, you know, um, working on getting a van that I'm going to call the Vangina and drive <laughs> that all around town. You know, just try to try to keep it light so that people aren't so it's not so cringy. You know, people mm -hmm. aren't so taken aback by it. But I think, yeah, I think I'm just most proud of in f over just over four years the awareness that we've raised just about the subject and that we have been able to engage with so many community partners. Um, you know, people like the Just One Project, like I said, and Dress for Success and Shine a Light and Boys and Girls Club and Communities and Schools, people that before I started in nonprofit, I would look at as like, wow, you're doing really great stuff. Like, I'd love to be part of that. And now in a way we are, you mm -hmm. know, in a way we are working with them on this big, great mission they have to keep kids in school, feed the community, educate people, prevent homelessness, prevent sex trafficking. You know, we've worked with St. Jude's Ranch for Children. I mean, how wonderful we sent some bags with them to their sleepaway camp, you know, so the girls could have period supplies at camp because they probably forgot, they probably didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, and, and while I do believe they have them for the girls, again, who wants to go and ask, right? So they left the bag, in my understanding, on their cot, so just being able to engage with our community, it just, it makes my heart happy. Uh, but for me, it's so strange that we have such a bad statistics because basically nowadays we have internet, everything mm -hmm. is so open. We are talking about 67 or 79 genders, but we are not talking about the basic natural process. Right, right. Well, in some ways, I don't know, maybe in some ways it's easier to talk about the newer stuff because it is so talked about you know mm -hmm. they hear it but i mean when was the last time you i mean i turned on tv and i you know my son's tv shows and you do you see transgender you see um all sorts of um, different forms of relationships and things um so i still think for some reason the subject of periods is still one of the more taboo situations for whatever reason and i don't i don't know maybe why. because it's too personal Maybe, maybe because it's personal, maybe because it is, I mean, look, it's gross, right? What happens? You know, like what's physically happening to you? That's not fun. Um, so maybe people are just still 
I just took my uh, child to the kindergarten mm -hmm. and the requirement is to provide uh, a, a set of clean clothes in the back, inside right. the back. <laughs> so the, your bag should right. be in the girl's bag. Right, right. No, that would be great. I mean, could you imagine if that was on the school list for to bring to school in high school, right? Everyone yeah. has to bring a box of pads and take them to the nurse's office. That's a great idea. We need to start that. <laughs> yeah, school supply list needs to have. Why not? Right. Start in fifth grade. And, right. Who knows when she right. needs it? Exactly. No, exactly. But, you know, the flip side of that is you're going to get someone, you know, that's going to say, I don't I don't see the point. I That's ridiculous. Why should I have to do that? But again, the more we talk about it, then they're going to see you're right, somebody does need this to be able to stay in school. You know, the phrase we use is period supplies or school supplies. And it's just very important to me that, yes, when you are buying those back to school supplies, throw a box of maxi pads in there because the kids need them. Mm -hmm. They really do. They need them just like they need a pencil. You know, you can have your pencil, your book, your new shoes, your backpack. <laughs> And then you walk out to go to school and you might not be able to go if you get your period. So you're always comfortable. Right. You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't happen somewhere in the school bus or on the way. Right. So you've been doing it for four years. Uh, you use your mom as part of your logo. Right. How your mom is connected to this? So my mom, Marilyn, um, she passed away in 2011. Oh. And uh, our so yes, our logo is her 1950s glamour shot. And mm -hmm. that's actually her signature that I kept it came off her driver's license and she was just wonderful. And when she passed away, she shared with me that she, she said, don't be me. I never did anything with my life. I never impacted anyone, which obviously broke my heart. It's not true. Um, you know, it's very, I always share the story that, you know, when you're no longer on this earth, you have, you have left a legacy because there's never going to be another you, right? Mm -hmm. There's never be another me and there'll never be another Marilyn. So she definitely left, her mark here just by being here but you know why, why did she say that because she was home uh, stay home mom um kind of so she um so I have two half sisters she had two daughters in a previous marriage and um that husband ended up leaving and it was you know in the 60s and you know in that time of the world if your husband left you you must be really awful mm -hmm. and so she was shunned by her community um and just really had to pick herself up by her bootstraps so I think she felt that she always lived this life. I call it obligation over inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I have to do this. I have to do that. My kids need me. I have to, and I have to have to. But what she didn't realize is in doing that, even though she viewed it as very mundane and not impacting anyone, she impacted us by showing us this is how you do it. This is how you make it work. And it may not always be your choice of like, oh, I don't want to do that but you have like you have to keep going mm -hmm. and so i feel sad that when she died that she didn't get to do what set her heart on fire right she didn't get to do what made her happy but she raised three daughters who are successful and giving back to the communities they live in and you know she was just great she worked at cvs pharmacy in her later years and a young man came in and held a gun up to her and tried to rob her. And she said, now, are you going to tell everyone you robbed a little old lady? <laughs> and he got so flustered, he ran out of the CVS. And we all thought, Mom, you could have got shot. You could have got killed. She said, he wasn't going to kill me. So she had this tenacity about her mm -hmm. that was just wonderful, right? And I bet she impacted that kid. I doubt he ever tried to rob anyone ever again after that experience. So yeah, it was just important to me. You know, periods were not her thing. And um, my family would say, I don't think your mom wants her face on a bag of tampons, you know? And I said, it's on a bag of dignity, right? We're giving people dignity with this gift in her name, and that makes me happy. I really like the idea that you incorporated the name of your mom to, you, yes, not to your Marilyn, name. Not Marilyn Monroe, right? <laughs> yeah. Although I'm sure she wouldn't mind being associated with Marilyn Monroe, but so yes, it is your my mom. Ma mom's name over there, but you are pushing that name. Yes. We're, for we're, it to exist. Yes. No, and I and I love it. And every every time I get to say it, it makes me happy. I really like that you have like big goals. It's not just school or homeless. You're spreading it Spread the every word. facility. Free the period. Free the period. Yes. Every facility in the city. Well, it's. I mean, like I said, it. it I guarantee, if you talk to any business owner, office manager, place where there's a public restroom, they have on their budget paper towels toilet paper or so oh, ma ma mouthwash you have mouthwash right, but you don't have right, a pad right so let's get some pads added in there you know <laughs> or they have those horrible machines i saw one the other day and it was 
75 cents for a tampon. Mm. And the message on it was, when life can't wait. <laughs> and so I did a social media post. I said, when life just can't wait, you better hope you have 75 cents. <laughs> because I have 75 cents, like I have money. But I, I, I never carry cash. No, I don't know, do we need to pay cash or no, is it a it's, car? No, but that's what I'm saying is I collectively have money, but I don't have three quarters. Mm -hmm. Does it take Apple Pay? Like, <laughs> how do you get that tampon out of there? And 75 cents for one tampon, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Give me a break. You know, we can do better. We don't have, we, we can do better for people. It's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I really like also that section from your presentation where you did calculation that if I, uh, give ten dollars for that ten dollars you can buy how much right well I mean so like I said sponsoring a period is ten dollars um, you know we ask for donations roughly for the bag but yes to your point ten dollars for you could buy one box mm -hmm. right or ten dollars for us because we do buy in bulk so for example, you know, a regular pad retail is 17 cents a pad, give or take, mm -hmm. right? And people come after me all the time. I either got it for this, I got it for that. I understand there's sales, there's coupons, there's this and that. Across the board, roughly a brand name pad is 17 cents. We're able, we were just able to buy 100,000 pads at three cents a pad oh, because wow. we bought so many. So- How did you get that deal? I called around, I mean, I found a supplier that was doing a closeout of this particular pad and he said, I'll sell them to you for three cents a pad. And I said, how many can you send me? So we bought, you know, eight, six pallets, eight pallets, something like that. Um, so you, it, it's great. And we've had, um, you know, we have suppliers call us and say, we're having a closeout of X, Y, and Z. Do you want it? I'll sell it to you for this. Or shipping is free or you know, different things. Um, so we just were part of the Alliance for Period Supplies, which is founded by Kotex. And they just sent us five pallets of product. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, and the, uh, the ugly side of nonprofit is the overhead, right? Nobody mm. wants to talk about what does it cost to run this nonprofit? That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, yeah. can you tell me more about your process? Because shipment, distribution, transportation, so much is involved labor. Right. Uh, I don't know, pack, probably pack, packaging, right? Also, you do packaging in, we do in house. Packaging, right. So, so we much have like processes. Can you tell me more about it? We do have lights on our building. We do have insurance. We do have. Um, gas in our vehicles, insurance on our vehicles. I mean, the thing is, is nobody wants to acknowledge, you can send me a box of tampons, but how do I distribute them mm -hmm. without gas in the car, insurance on the vehicle? You know, there are certain monetary things that- Because well, for businesses, it's a write-off, right? Right. Well, yes, every, right. Financially, because we are 501c3, mm -hmm. all of your donations are fully tax deductible. And I do know certain people, I've learned too, people file their taxes differently. They're in different tax brackets, certain things. But I would just check with your financial advisor uh -huh. and find out. So how are you compensating, as you said, that he sent this pallet, but now the rest of the process is on you? Right. How, how you sponsor this part of the process? Well, we use donate. I mean, we get donations, mm -hmm. financial donations. Like I said, you know, we do have a couple companies that provide us with an annual sponsorship. So that's wonderful. Um, but yeah, just, just straight monetary donations that people send in is how we fund. I mean, we do run 80% to our program and 20% to overhead. So I feel that's a pretty good um, ratio. Mm -hmm. So 80% goes directly to the programs and only 20% goes to overhead. Why Wendy um, doesn't have salary? Because <sighs> Wendy is a glutton for punishment. I don't know. I didn't start it to have a salary, right? I started it. I but really, it's been for years. It's Come been on, for years. Wendy. I know. I know. You are in business. I know. I started it because I thought I'd be drinking wine with my girlfriends <laughs> and packing period kits and handing them out, and it would all be so wonderful. And it has been wonderful. And I, you know, I'm very blessed to have my husband who pays me a salary from NDL, um, and so he he sustains my passion of doing this but yes i do need to in in tr in making it a true business right god forbid i got hit by a bus because you, you just got paid uh your assistant new assistant just got my paid. Assistant gets paid and when yes. still without money and without a salary <laughs> but i do it it's i it's payment in my heart right i just i love it so much and i couldn't imagine not doing it but yes i do need to um if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, no, nobody's stepping in and doing what I do for free. Mm -hmm. So definitely in the budgeting process, I need to put a salary in there. It's just been, like I said, it's the program has been so fast and furious and growing so quickly. 
I don't want to take that money for me. But yes, I guess if we're looking at it from a strict, take the emotion out of it. You are on a big mission. You know what I mean? I'm on a big mission <laughs> to end period poverty in Southern Nevada. That's a that's in my vagina, right? That's, a, that's, that's my big goal. I want to. You need I to drive have, it You need to have a good pillow under you so I you can do. drive. I do. You're absolutely right. All right, I'm gonna uh, sign me up. Sign me up for a salary. You've yeah. convinced me. It's time. It's, it's been time. four years. When thinking business, I I see that it can be implemented and put in every hotel room. <laughs> yeah. It, no, it can. I mean, I had a beautiful discussion with um, the gentleman in charge of, um, I think it's HR, something for MGM. Mm -hmm. And I said, can we get these supplies at least in your employee restrooms? Like yeah. you should be- assuming, Why not? Right, like in the room where the women change, you know, for mm -hmm. their shift, like, can you offer them? And he was super responsive. And I think a lot of it too is just, where does it fit in their budget and how do they add it? And, you know, I think I would say most people are like, yes, let's do it. But then it kind of gets into how do we do it? Where does the money come from? And we've never had that expense before. Where does that budget money come from? But it's just making it, you know, part of, you know, just, um, you know, the workplace experience. For you, what is the easiest deal to make with other nonprofits, school, schools? What's your best client? Who is the most approachable and yeah. easy? Well, the easy when well, they come, I would like, let's yes, do it today. Yes, yes. So every, I love everybody. The easiest, you know, as far as easy goes, is other nonprofits mm -hmm. because it's so much collaboration. Everyone just wants to work together. And like I said, because I feel we're one of the only ones solely focused on this, it's like, yes, we need that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want that. You know, just one project. They have beautiful community markets, and now we have shelves of our products in their community markets. And then uh, Clark County School District is opening their own student store. So we have a shelf in their student store. Um, but to your to the point of who's easiest, so like Clark County School District, you know, they have a lot of layers, mm -hmm. you know? So when we got to the right person and then they were super engaged, but then it has to pass through the layers. And the same thing with the school, with the library district. You know, Henderson Library is one gal and they made it happen and it was super easy and then Clark County Library, beautiful people, a lot of different layers. So make it to this layer, make it to this layer. So and, and on this side, there is Wendy on her own mm -hmm. who doesn't pay herself. Yes. But she needs, <laughs> <laughs> she needs to, she, but she needs to uh, reach out to the right person, right. spend a lot of uh, like set up meeting, go right. on the meeting to present, right? That's right. your process. That's how right. you do that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it, like I said, everyone, when I get the person on the phone, everybody, CCSD, libraries, you know, nonprofits, it's always yes. It's just how does it work? How do we make that happen? And then really, I mean, everyone's my priority. Every, I, I like to say if you bleed and are in need, we're here for you, right? It's just I want to help everybody. Um, but I really like this idea where this walking areas like Town Square or Summerl, downtown Summerlin mm -hmm. or Uncommons, they are so saturated areas for locals. Right. Why not to have the stations? It's perfect idea. Right. No, it is. I mean, a lot of people feel there'll be abuse and there'll be waste and there might. I mean, but I think it's worth I think it's worth it. I think it's worth trying. Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't, you know, even if they don't have it in every bathroom, you know, have it in one bath. I mean, we've got to start somewhere. I mean, ideally it'd be in every bathroom, mm -hmm. right? But I have seen a few places that have a sign if you need period supplies or, you know, go here. Mm -hmm. So there's somewhere, which is a start. Mm -hmm. But again, the minutia of whatever, you know, you're actively bleeding and then you've got to clean yourself up and walk to a reception desk or something and find one. Um, I was at a casino the other day on the strip and I got my period and lo and behold, I didn't have a tampon, right? Who, <laughs> why would I have a tampon? Um, and uh, I walked around for 20 minutes before I found one sundry store in the casino that sold me four for $15.99. The prices it, are ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it just, you know, it just- Incorporate properties. <laughs> right, right. So it just, you know, it really, like I said, it just shouldn't be a thing. It should be- available to all who need it because and i'll say it again i've said it it's you know it's not a luxury item uh, i i really wish that as they were giving away sanitizers when it was pandemic right they give away this this right. type of things right right 
And well, you know, we'll get there. Like I said, the more like, you know, you've had me on here to talk. And so whoever is watching, hopefully now they've become more educated about that it really is a thing and it's a problem. And you know, what can we do? How can we help? And like I said, my, my biggest thing is just talking about it. I mean, money's great. Volunteers are great. Every, all of that, right? We need that. But the more you're talking to your kids, to your friends about periods and the need for having those supplies and how it isn't a luxury item, that's what's going to, in the big picture, move this forward. So where to donate one more time? Projectmaryland.com. Yes, projectmaryland.com or follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook. I try to do the Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, but you know, it's a little over my head. I'm sometimes I think I'm too old for all so that I, technology. I, I, saw, I saw that button that it's uh, $10 a month. Do you need to sign up for the whole year? Like, or you can randomly, or it goes automatically. So if you do the $10 a month, it'll be an automatic charge. Mm -hmm. Um, you can cancel it anytime. Just if you sign up and then you decide you can't do it or you don't want to do it anymore, just email me and I'll cancel it. It's really fine. Um, or you can go on and make a one-time donation. Okay. And either either way, you know, the, the monthly donation is nice because it allows us to budget. We know we're getting this many $10 a month and then we know we can purchase this much with that money. Um, but we like, we like one-time donations too, you know, whatever. I really want the community to contribute to us in the way that makes them happy. Some people like to give products, some people can give time, and some people don't have time, but they can give money. So, you know, however you fit into that, we, we greatly appreciate it all. Why people, why regular people that are paying taxes are doing this? Why not our government? Yeah, I don't, I wish I had the answer. I don't, I really don't know. I don't know the answer. But until they do, we're gonna do it. There is a soap. In every restroom you go, why there shouldn't be a pad? I agree. But to that point, I think that is more, you know, on the proprietor of the establishment. You know, let's talk to our business owners about, like I said, when you're, when you're doing your Costco order for toilet paper and paper towels, let's throw a box of pads on there. Let's throw a thing of tampons, set them in a little container on the counter. And yes, it'll be abused. Yes, people will take too many, and then they won't. <laughs> you think, and then, you think well, so? Well, it does. I mean, that's everyone's question. Mm -hmm. They're going to steal them. You can't help that. But what you can know is for every, you know, one person that's stealing, you've helped 10 people that really need it. If those tampons can live in the restroom for five years, you have very good chances to fill out the restrooms yes. in the city. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. No, it really, I mean, it, it seems like when you say it, it, it it seems like such an easy problem to solve, mm -hmm. but people have to see that it's important. They have to see that it's not, you know, you don't ask someone to carry a roll of toilet paper in their handbag, right, to use your bathroom. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes out and says, there's no more toilet paper, I'll get right on that, because that's important, that's a necessity. Mm -hmm. But if somebody uses your bathroom and they get their period and they're not prepared, you should help them with that. Last question, what would be, uh, for uh, Wendy, a uh, win this year to 2023. So I want to get my van. We need that. That's become critical mass of needing a van to transport large quantities of products because we have gotten, like I said, um, with the libraries, with the school districts, with mm -hmm. places where I need to be able to load up more than just my maxi taxi can fit or my personal vehicle. Um, so I want to get a van. That's my top. That's one of my top priorities of the, before the end of the year. I want to, um, like I said, we did get approval to be in all 25 libraries, so we need to deliver to all 25 libraries and definitely set that up as a reoccurring donation so that we can keep track and so that all of our friends who need us can find us because the libraries are a great resource for everybody, including unhoused people mm -hmm. and people with transportation issues because it's my understanding that all public libraries are on a bus route so that provides you know some better access for people who don't have transportation mm -hmm. so definitely before the end of the year want to get us in all of the libraries get all that on our website and just really continue to serve and continue to raise awareness but yeah those would be my two my two high points to finish out the year good luck thank you <laughs> I, I hope i will see you free kiosks yes. all over the city there you go you <laughs> free put, it, boxes. put it out there we're gonna we're gonna put it into the universe Fr right free boxes Qu the only question will you have logo on all of them logo of your mom i hope so <laughs> i want my mom in bathrooms all over town <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that was her high level goal in life, but we'll we'll make it happen. Okay. Good luck. Thank you so much.